It doesn't mean that you have to settle for a small vacation. Think big in your summer travel. It's easy. Yeah, there's so many cool places you can visit for a low price. And kind of U.S. News just released a list of the most affordable locations in America to visit that won't break the bank. So let's break them down for you. Coming in at number five, Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. With a wide variety of free museums and monuments, you can spend a couple of guilt-free days exploring our nation's history. Number four, Nashville, Tennessee. Known for offering some of the lowest hotel prices in the South, Nashville offers a laid back getaway filled with some down home fun. Coming in at number three on the list is Savannah, Georgia. Low prices are just one of the perks in this southern city. From picturesque historic architecture to restaurants serving hearty portions of southern fare, you can experience it all without breaking the bank. The second most affordable place, Yellowstone Park. Home to breathtaking hiking trails, erupting hot springs, and roaming animals, the entrance fee is just a small price to pay for a walk through America's oldest national park and the number one most affordable location Yosemite National Park with low priced camping areas uh, you can skip the hotel rates and just pitch a tent the breathtaking scenery is the ultimate way to escape the hustle and bustle of life so Connie out of those five places which would you most like to visit well I've actually I went to school at Montana State which is in Bozeman close to Yellowstone National Park so I have done the hot potting thing yeah. in the warm springs and that all that looks incredible that there. was pretty cool yeah. I would go to Savannah yeah, love the history there it looks like too. a beautiful place yeah and and big Fried food looks good Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Can't beat that southern food. <laughs> Probably not. Expensive ones and maybe ways to avoid them these yeah, days. Yeah, unless you have a lot of cash in your pocket. <laughs> We're going to well, dream big. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> TripAdvisor is out with a brand new list. Now, the prices on these destinations are based off of a one night stay in a four star hotel, round trip taxi fare, cocktails for two, and dinner for two. So they're going a little overboard here. Okay. A little lavish, but here we go. First up, Chicago. From lavish shopping to deep dish pizza to a stroll on the Navy Pier. There's no doubt Chicago is a fun town, but vacation in here could cost you an average of $393 a night. Mm. Next on the list, Honolulu, Hawaii. While its setting is beautiful, right on the Pacific Ocean, backed by dramatic cliffs and extinct volcanoes, a luxurious stay here will cost you an average of $398 a night. Now we're getting in deep. Oh yeah, here we go. Third most expensive, San Francisco. Crossing the Golden Gate Bridge, taking a trolley up the inclines, and chowing down on some crab at the Fisherman's Wharf. That all sounds fun, but a lively night here could cost you an average of $429. Ooh. Second most expensive, Boston. As one of America's oldest cities, it's hard not to feel surrounded by the rich history in this town, but I'm warning you, just like Paul Revere, <laughs> that a night out here could cost you an average of 450 bucks. And no surprise here, the most expensive, New York City. Arguably the most vibrant and sprawling metropolis, a lavish night out in the Big Apple could set you back 456 bucks tonight. So again, wow. these are very lavish nights out. Yeah, you could easily spend not that much money. And there's all those towns have good deals, but overall they are the most expensive. You know, I've been to Chicago to work twice and I've never had a deep dish pizza. Really? Never. Giordano's. That the that's place the to place go? to go. I'm Write that it down. down. All right, good you got stuff. it. Thank you for the recommendation. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. I know. Hey, listen, all this week we've been helping you get ready for your vacation, and Brandon today has the ultimate way to get away without, uh, with savings, lots of money, and also saving time. Yeah, that's right, Connie. The key to saving money this summer is to travel in a different direction than everyone else, which means book a trip in an off-peak location. So here are some deal-friendly destinations. First up, Park City, Utah. During the winter, this old mining town is a paradise for skiers, but it's when the slopes are closed that great deals and other adventures come to life, like whitewater rafting and mountain biking. It's a great escape for the whole family. Another mountain playground known for its ski slopes, Aspen, Colorado. Although it's known as a place where the rich and famous play, you can find great deals during the summer. Now, if you have a taste for Cajun flavor and saving money, New Orleans is a great summer destination. Maybe it's the humidity, though, that makes it the <laughs> off-peak season. Whether you stroll through the French Quarter or take in some jazz music, the Big Easy has some great deals waiting for you. Also, keep this in mind, national and state parks are always affordable places to visit, no matter what season it is. So again, Connie, the key, don't follow the crowds, go in the opposite direction. I like some of those ski resort areas because you probably would get really great deals during the summer. That was smart. Absolutely. Awesome. Those resorts there are just begging you to come. <laughs> exactly. So here's the question this morning. Where's your favorite place to vacation? Let us know on our Facebook page this morning and uh, spread the knowledge around. Now, talking vacation's fun, but we got a big problem out on the roads. A traffic alert coming to you from Phoenix. Finding out the gas prices and rising airfare aren't keeping you from planning a summer getaway. Whatever it takes to get out of the heat, right? Yeah. Well, in fact, Yahoo Travel says 49% of you are planning
planning a vacation. So if you are getting out of Dodge, I want to help take the stress out of your vacation. First, make sure you plan ahead. Nothing creates stress faster than not having a plan. So this includes reservations, packing, and even daily activities. Second, make sure you create a vacation budget. Your trip can easily get spoiled if you end up spending too much or worse yet, completely run out of money. Now, if you are traveling with kids, put together a travel bag. This should include drinks, snacks, and fun things to do so they stay occupied. Finally, leave the world behind you. Now, when I say world, I mean work. Focus on <laughs> spending time with your family and relaxing. You can worry about work once your vacation is over. Now, if you need someone to go with you and remind you of all these tips, I'm free. You can take me with you. There you go. <laughs> that travel bag I like to call the uh, keep mommy sane bag. <laughs> exactly. And I have no questions of, are we there yet? Exactly. Just keep them occupied. Lots of snacks. I guess. Just turn the phone off. Yeah. You Why might would get you yourself keep in touch? You might get yourself in trouble yeah, if you're true. not careful. Very but true. you know, when you go on summer vacation, if you're gone for a week, you want to keep in touch. And and you've got some tips on some high tech ways people can do that. Believe it or not, Kirk, the days of sending a letter, a handwritten letter, <laughs> those are over. What is that? We're not doing that anymore. Stamps? Do yeah. Those exist? Stamps, postcards. <laughs> do anybody send those anymore? Well, of course, you know, you could just pick up a phone while you're on vacation, but Keep in mind, if you travel overseas, you are going to get hit with colossal roaming charges. You know, you could also send a text message or email, but nothing beats being able to see your loved ones and share your experiences with them. So I talked with a travel industry insider about a few gadgets that will give you a visual way to stay connected. This is the uh, Sony Bloggy. And it can take images and videos, but the really neat thing about it is that it has a service called Quick that allows you to stream in real time video. So you can give all your friends a URL, a website address, and they can see the event as it's happening to you in real time. Well, how cool is that? That's right up your alley. Yeah, Kirk. that's pretty slick. Another device we talked about is the PlayStation Vita, which is a full gaming platform, but also gives you the ability to do voice or video calls using Skype. Now, if buying new products isn't in your budget, you can always just use your laptop or smartphone to Skype with friends and family back home, which I feel Skyping is definitely the ultimate way to stay connected. Changing the way we communicate. Yes, no question it is. about that. Brandon, thank you so much. Well, if you are one of those people who likes to drive with your dog on your lap, stay out of New Jersey. The Garden State is fining drivers up to a thousand bucks for unbuckled pooches and cats. Drivers could also face criminal charges if they are found guilty. Now, some Jersey drivers are calling this new law just complete nonsense, but the Motor Vehicle Commission says it's trying to keep everyone, including pets, safe. And Connie, you know, they sell little doggy car seats. And my mom actually has one for her dog, Haley. And it's like a little cloth booster seat and they can get strapped in. They can yeah. look out the window. It's good because it keeps the dog safe. But you know, in New Jersey, they actually have so many dogs running, running around in your car because people take them to the Jersey Shore for the weekend so they don't have to take them to the sitter. Yeah, that's true. A lot, of, a lot of dogs in the cars. And the thing is, you know, if you have other people in the car, those dogs can become like a speeding bullet if you're in a car accident. So it's really safety for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Good advice there. Uh, good point. Thanks, Brandon. Oh, Whoa, no, slow down, so Kurt. Happy. <laughs> they're they're healthy, though. Right. They're fat free, they're sugar free. Right. Nothing it's, to worry if about. If you close your eyes, right? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't count. What's your favorite? <laughs> a favorite? I like them all, but I'm a glazed girl. Just yeah. Plain yeah. old glazed. Simple glazed. Yeah. Can I look Anything at these? Anything with chocolate on it, I'll yeah. eat. <laughs> I see this one here. It's a chocolate. looks like a cake donut. That Those are my favorite. That was my favorite, Love too. I was going to try to wrestle it from you, but you it's can have it. It's all yours, Connie Cola. No. I'll, I'm asking people, you know, jump on Facebook. I'm already talking with people on my page. What's your favorite donut shop? Because everyone has a favorite little hole-in-the-wall donut shop they love. Krispy Kreme when it comes right off the yeah. machine. But you can't have more yes. than a couple because they're just so sweet. And what's your favorite donut? Do you like the chocolate? Do you like the glazed? What's, what's the deal? I'm just going to sniff your donut and then you can have it. It's mine. That's all I, I can't have it. I already touched That's it. That's all I need. Ooh, I feel I the like calories it. going oh, in I already. It. Oh, oh, yeah. It's mine. Okay, you can have it. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> that just happened, by the way. <laughs> You can tell, you can tell he, he has, has siblings. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> sisters or brothers at home. That's yeah. what well, how would you like to eliminate the process of finding a parking spot by having an automated robotic garage park your car for you? Sounds nice, doesn't it? Basically, you pull your car into a bay and simply enter your information into a keypad outside. Your car will then be transported to an available space, safely parked until you are ready for the automated system to bring it back to you. This new product, along with many others, are on display at the International Parking Institute Conference and Expo at the Phoenix Convention Center. Now, I did some digging for you to find out more about the goals of these new technologies. You know, it's all about the destination. Uh, people want to go downtown, downtown Phoenix. They need to go to the airport. They need to go to the hospital. And parking is a huge piece of that equation. If we can make that simple, 
easy to understand, safe, convenient, uh, then we've really helped make downtown Phoenix or downtown anywhere USA a much better place to go. So from paying for parking meters with your smartphone to automated pay stations to mobile apps that locate parking garages with available spaces, the future of parking has arrived. And don't be surprised if you see some of this new technology soon popping up at a parking lot near you. So, Connie, this new technology coming out of this parking revolution is really exciting. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and that robotic parking garage. Really you cool. mentioned at 520, you know, losing your car in a garage. You yeah. won't have to worry about it with that. I guess not. All right. Thanks, Brandon.